C++ reflection, uh, reflection via Clang loop tooling. So Clang has this cool thing. It has an abstract, abstract syntax tree. And what you can do is you can just uh, inherit from it, and then you can traverse the tree however you like. Pretty neat. So how can we use this? So here comes Griff Reflect. I'm not doing it for Clang. <laughs> Uh, so basically, I, I have written a tool that reads the AST information, and it can construct valid C++ classes containing meta information. So this meta information belongs in a header, uh, and so what you can do is you can just include it into your source code, and it will uh, allow you to mitigate any boilerplate uh, code writing for uh, reflection. So I provide an API that allows you to do so. So, yep. Those are the benefits. Um, and so we do that just through a bunch of template instantiations. So uh, the, the main, what this centers around, is this uh, reflect function. And what it does is it returns a specialization uh, of a metadata instance. So what's a metadata instance? So basically, if we define some kind of a, a class, say a vec3, then what I do is I have my tool read the uh, abstract syntax tree and abstract the information that we care about. Then I pop this into a form, and then we get to do some magic. So we have this, uh, this data members function, and what I do is I uh, use the forms again to just fill it out with bindings uh, containing a reference as well as the name of the actual object. Cool. So we can use this to do something like writing generic uh, serialization. Let's see, Right, so where this comes in is we simply call this function called reflect, given the object, and it returns to us a meta instance. So we could be using std apply here, C++17, right? So uh, what we do is we have some kind of for each in tuple, and we just operate on the data members that we had generated uh, by the uh, lib tool. And then we can just iterate over each uh, member and operate on the information. So uh, because we want this to work for any type, there can be types nested within types. So we make this serialize, uh, this serialize function uh, recursive. So, next bit. Yeah, so we'll get back to that. Um, so here's how it looks. So inside of main, we have some kind of vec3, and uh, we fill it out with some information, and we call serialize. And just like that, without the person having written any code, uh, we can print it out in JSON. Really nice. Cool. So as far as running the tool, uh, so what we have to do is we just take the, uh, the tool, we pass it the directory to our compile commands, as well as whatever files we want to process. Um, and then what this does is it generates all of the, uh, the header files, which can then just be included directly into our project. So this would go at the top of a file. So here's where it gets super cool. So if we make some kind of a modification to VEC3, let's say that we just want to pop VEC2 inside of there for whatever reason, demonstration purpose. Um, so we rerun the tool, and then that pops us, uh, that gives us a modified uh, metadata instance, and you can see that it has generated the VEC2, and additionally, it's also included the header for the VEC2 here. This is all just using information that's made available to us through the abstract syntax tree. So we modify main.cpp, we fill in those two extra fields, uh, same code, and then when we run the program again, we are outputting all of the extra information. There was no work on the user's part, all they had to do was hit compile. And applications, right? So this would be useful if we wanted to send data over a network, uh, and also if we have some kind of data-driven GUI, uh, a user can just create some kind of a struct, it automatically gets serialized, and then it can get sent over to some GUI, which then interprets it and then builds itself based on that. Um, and of course, saving application state, more serialization. So as far as uh, further work goes, there's a whole bunch of trying to generate C++ is actually seems to be a very 
big problem. Uh, and so here are just a small number of them that come off the top of my head. Uh, namespace classes, so basically just utilizing more of the APIs that are made available by the Clang AST. And that's all. Thank you.